The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Okay, the, the next presentation is a comparison of various approaches to the prediction of formal pressure of ACC will be presented by uh, Dr. Peter Bilberg, senior researcher at Strangbeton, Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Peter, uh, when I guess was conducting this work, also was uh, affiliated with the CBI, also in Stockholm, and he is the chair of the Ryland Committee, uh, TC, does it have a number? 233. 233 on form pressure exerted by SCC. Thank you very much, Kamal. Yes, uh, now that we have uh, discussed and got so many explanations on the background to why uh, the foam work uh, can be decreased from hydrostatic, which you might assume with SCC, uh, I would go more into uh, field studies or more or less actually the comparison of various approaches to the prediction of forward pressure using SEC because for, for the last 10 to 12 years the last years uh, several models have been developed all around the world and uh, I actually managed to um, gather all the uh, people responsible for development of these uh, models in Stockholm last year and uh, the background, like Kamal mentioned, mentioned, is that I share a Rylam committee and he, already when we started to initiate to ask Rylam to, to form this committee, we had ideas about uh, the deliverables. Of course, we, we will produce a committee report. Uh, we also already then had a wish. I mean, it's not very easy to to accomplish, to gather people from all over the world, but we wanted to evaluate existing form pressure mo <laughs> models and also to organize a workshop. Uh, you see, the committee started 2009 and uh, beside me I have famous Nicolas Roussel from France as a secretary. We have 30 members. We started in 2009 and we expect to conclude the work in uh, 2015. Now we're going to talk about the second deliverable, evaluation of existing form pressure models. So the people behind these models are the ones listed here. We have a model by Ovarles and Roussel from France, Perrault et al. also from France, three different representatives or two persons of one uh, standard from Germany, Thilo Proske, he had two different models. There are two different models within the Dean norm and also one model from uh, Mark Beitzel. From Canada we have what we already heard, the model by Kayat and Omran. We also have a model by John Gardner with the colleagues and here from the U USA we have a model developed by David Lang and his master student Tejeda Dominguez. Well, I have no time really uh, to go very deep into the models themselves because they are, they, if I would do that, they deserve quite a lot of time to, to be explained. But what I can mention is the key parameters which each and one of those models are built upon. We have here a characteristic 
pressure decay curve. That means the characteristic shape of the curve from initial uh, completed casting to cancellation. We have also a model here um, dealing with how the undisturbed slump loss looks. They have a T0, the time to zero slump. That means the concrete actually rests in the slump cone, so it, the flow after lifting the cone is of course very much affected by the resting and the structural built up in the cone. The German Tilo Proske and the Dean Arm, they are, I should say, this is by David Lang, and this is John Gardner, and the setting time is the key parameter for the German Dean Norm and Tilo Proske's uh, models. But we have no less than four models here based on the structural built up, which is really the time dependent increase, the linear actually, time dependent increase of the static yield stress stress, which we heard uh, Eric describe uh, the definition about. And this is then the model by the French guys, uh, Wireless and uh, Roussel, Perrault, Kamal and uh, Ahmed, and also Mark Beitzel. So this is how far deep I go into describing the models. Sorry about that. You should see one of those equations. Oh man. All right, like I said, we gathered in Stockholm, and this is uh, CBI, is the Swedish Cement and Concrete Research Institute. I used to work there uh, last year. We decided to squeeze in all these activities in the backyard of our institute. It's approximately 300 square meters, 17 by 17 meters or something. We plan to cast in total eight walls, two per day in four days in a row. And we, the variables were different mix designs, casting rate, and wall geometry. Because you know only eight walls, you can, well, as a researcher you wish to vary everything. Uh, formwork stiffness, casting method, you name it. But how to evaluate that if you vary everything all the time? So we limited the variations to this, actually. And four of the walls were 6.6 .6 meter high. They were 2.4 meter long and 0.2 meter, 200 millimeters thick. Four of them were lower, 4.2 meter, still 2.4 meter long. And three of them were 200 millimeter thick, and the last one was twice as thick, 400 millimeter. So this is how the test area looks, and you can see we didn't change the way of casting either. So we cast using a pump from top, and we were monitoring the, the rise of the concrete head with a laser meter very carefully. Uh, what we will refer to as the measured pressure was captured by a pressure cell with the diaphragm inside flush with the inside of the formwork. And they were placed in four different levels from bottom up to get a pressure profile. So we also decided how to you know, we had to order the concrete. Uh, what kind of flow were we talking about? I mean, SEC can be, somebody said, from slightly more than two, 400 millimeter to over 800 millimeter. But we, were, we wanted slump flows between 600 and 700 millimeters, which, if I didn't miscalculate anything, is between 24 and 28 inches. And of course, stable. And uh, I mean, when you have half the world of experts in Stockholm, four days, and you realize, at least I'm lucky with the weather, you don't want to jeopardize too, too much. So basically, they delivered slightly stiffer concrete than we wanted. And we had to adjust 
uh, each mix differently. And of course, when <laughs> when you add uh, chemicals, you 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 want to make sure it goes down into the mix properly. You see, he secured his foot here in the <laughs> frame. Well, it's nice to have dedicated truck drivers. And then, after we realized we have adjusted the concrete to the right uh, slump flow, it was very nice to see the activity. Because all these researchers and uh, staff started to, in their own way, characterize the concrete to fit the models. Here we see Mark Beitzel, the other German guys, Tilo Proska, Kamal and Ahmed with their portable vein. I think we'll hear more about that. Next uh, presentation. Uh, Lloyd Keller and the guys from uh, Ellis Dawn representing the model I refer to as John uh, Gardner's, but they are all behind that. David Lang with his pressure uh, tube for the characterization of the pressure cancellation curve. John Gardner with the rheometer. That's a, another type of German rheometer. And also the very nice way Ancian uh, and Perot is measuring the structural build up just with the static plate. And the, and the scale. You have to read more about that. It's very interesting. Well, going more into the results, if we plot here the relative pressure, we heard about it, is the actual pressure relative to the hydrostatic in percent. So this is hydrostatic and this is no pressure whatsoever. And we plot it versus the casting rate. And we see there are no good correlations to be found. We have lower walls and higher walls and they vary between 50 and 90 percent of hydrostatic. So just to emphasize what the guys before me had said, we have to incorporate when predicting pressures uh, the concrete properties at rest. They must be included somehow. And the results from each model, now you will see 10 slides in a row with a slightly similar kind of uh, design here. We have the measure, measured pressure on the x-axis and the calculated pressure using each model on the y-axis. And this is the model by Kamal and Ahmed. It's based on structural build-up and uh, like Ahmed said, a huge lab study and a huge database. And we see, and this is the one-to-one, -one, the dotted line. I mean, if you have matched this with all your predictions, then you have the best model you can ask for. But this is good enough. Slightly, the regression is forced to origin here. So it's always starting there. So we are focusing on the slope. And the slope bigger than one means that the model is conservative. It predicts slightly higher pressures than measured. And the R square shows us the, the precision of the model and it's as high as 0.79. Ovarles and Roussel, they are uh, physicists. So they didn't bother to do much lab work. So this is a strictly analytical model. And it works fairly good to higher slope and R square of 0.77. The other French guys incorporated the influence of the rebars because all, I can tell you very uh, many of those models are thinking about the friction between formwork and uh, concrete relating to the, the shear stress and stuff like that. So of course if you have a lot of reinforcement the concrete has even much more chance to get stuck. So that's what they they actually based on this model and just added 
some parameters relating to the rebars. And you see it's like the higher precision and lower uh, slope. David Lang with his pressure tube results in a, actually the smallest slope, very close to the one-to-one -one line, and a very good uh, R-square, 0.8. Unfortunately, the tube didn't work the first day, or the first uh, casting the first day. So we have only for seven of the walls the results here. But also, I mean, if you check what's happening in the slump cone, just to see how the slump flow reduces by time, if the concrete rests, you have also a very good uh, prediction model. Slump, oh, I mean, the slope is like 1.3 but a very high R-square of 0.86. And here we see John and the guys from uh, Ellis Dawn and, well, it's obviously not from the building site. This is from a very nice, I hope, boat tour in the archipelago outside Stockholm one of the evenings. And shades, when yeah. Stop huh? When did it stop raining? Huh? When did it stop raining? Stop, it started raining in the end of the week, so. Mark Beitzel also built very, very similar to the physicist model, structural built up. Again, we have a, a conservative uh, slope, 1.23, and R square about 0.8. Proske, they differ between mean values and design values, those Germans, and this is based on the setting time. Uh, we see again conservative slope r square 0.69 and when you go to design you can see of course you predict higher to have a bigger margin that's exactly the same for the d norm you should know that within some of these models there are already built in some safety factors so to say that oops this is overesting very much the formal pressure is kind of the meaning with this model. It should. And uh, compared to the design values going slightly higher in slope. But nice uh, precision. Well, to summarize the regressions, we can see that we have conservative models, all 10 of them. And the slope goes from 1.09, which is very close to 1 to 1, to 1.42 for the design values for the D-norm. And the R-squares go from 0 0.69 to 0 0.86. So, well, how to pick the best and how to exclude anything? Impossible. And this is one of the conclusions, but like it's been said before also, unfortunately, just to know the, the height of the casting of the formwork, the geometry, concrete density, casting rate, it's not enough. And because the concrete properties, the structural build-up addressed must be accounted for. But it's it's not a general, if you, if you vary one mix, vary the slump flow by adding or taking away superplasticizer, yes. You have a correlation between maybe slump flow and the formal pressure, but in general, do that with the mix here in Minneapolis and, and compare it to a mix in Miami. You cannot have a general model saying that. And to nobody's surprise, all those 10 models are based on key parameters relating to concrete behavior, even if it is the structural build-up, pressure decay, setting time, or undisturbed slump loss. They all describe, some, to some extent, what's happening with the concrete at rest. Well, 
All the models were satisfactory, they were conservative with good precision, like I said, can't single anything, uh, any, any of them out as best or exclude anyone for poor performance. So in my view, the choice of model for the future should be based on how to capture the key parameter in the most convenient or easiest way and of course the most reliable and accurate way. And we absolutely need much bigger database from field studies to get a grip on whatever model we choose to work with. We need to get a grip on the reliability and confidence. And I should mention now that if we call this the round robin test series number one, we are planning, or we should I say, Kamal and others are planning to have a part two for, uh, to be carried out at the World of Concrete one year from now in Las Vegas. So let me just acknowledge some of the sponsors here. ACI, not least. I got both moral support, which is very nice all the time when you are dealing with the planning of a very strange project like this. But I also got financial support from the Concrete Research Council, CRC of ACI. Moral support from Rylem, because this was actually a Rylem event, you could say, within my committee, and it's not just to take for granted, I can incorporate others outside of Ireland, but that was no problem. I got financial support from the Swedish consortium for financing basic research in the concrete field, which is strongly linked to CBI, where I worked, and also some funds from the development fund of the Swedish construction industry. So I say thank you for, to all of them and to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for this very nice uh, summary of the, of the testing that we've done last year. Uh, any questions? Just to understand the process a little bit better, so that everybody had their various instruments that they used to characterize the mix before the placements were made. Was that done just once, or was it done each day, or with each load? How, how, when did you actually characterize the mix before casting the walls? Well, basically, every, every for every wall, here comes the truck with like uh, 5.5 or 6 cubic meter of concrete. We evaluated it, adjusted it, everybody agreed, now we have a nice concrete. And then everybody started sampling. Really, you know, with wheelbarrows like maniacs. So the and, then, each truck. and then we started pouring. But then the predictions were made based on that load? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so every truck was characterized to oh, see yes. what its parameters were, and then the calculation, the prediction was made, and the casting was made. The same time. Yeah, well, and of course, all the characterizations representing different models were done at exactly the same time. Other questions? All right. Well, very, very good. Thank you very much thank you. for your presentation. I'll take the mic from you.